Hey everyone, Lewis Robertson with Alcove Productions. I know a lot of you might have been hearing some of the hype around these cordial cables. Uh, Pete Thorne just recently released a video where he showed the difference between uh, some of the other uh, cables that he was using and a cordial cable, and it showed quite a big difference. Someone from Cordial reached out because I was doing the guitar cover videos, uh, and they wanted me to try a, uh, a cordial cable. They sent me this cable. Uh, this cable I actually used in the Tender Surrender guitar cover. Um, so you'll see that uh, kind of burgundy uh, uh, cable. Immediately, just with changing one cable, I did notice uh, a fair amount of difference in how responsive my system was. I've always used high quality cables. I've used a combination of Megami and Monster cables uh, with my guitar uh, uh, recording rig and um, never thought that I heard it <laughs> until I heard one of these cables. So with how much difference a single cable made, I knew that it would be a huge difference using multiple cables. So I went ahead and ordered a whole bunch of cordial cables. And tonight uh, we are going to go ahead and replace all of the cabling in the entire setup and compare what the sound of my original Megami and, uh, and uh, Monster cable setup uh, sounds like uh, against the all 100% uh, cordial cable setup. So um, let's get to it. Uh, it's time to tear this all apart and rewire it with the cordial cables. So let's get to that. Just as I am working with these cables, so this is a Megami cable uh, that I made that I just uh, pulled out, and this is one of the new cordial uh, cables. Um, look at how much of a size difference there is between these two cables. All right, and so now let's do it uh, with just cordial cables. Right off the bat, I can tell this just feels so much more responsive. This just feels like I'm part of it, like I'm one with the, uh, the circuit here. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what the difference is. So the top one is uh, uh, like a purpley blue color uh, labeled existing. That's my existing setup. Uh, and then the bottom is cordial, uh, and that is an orange. We have a surprising amount of, of high frequency loss um, happening with the existing cabling. In recording situations where a lot of times we really are kind of splitting hairs, um, this is a, a massive difference coming from just, just cabling. We're going to go ahead and run this through the frequency analyzer. So let's go ahead and run that now, starting with the existing cabling. All right, so what we're seeing here, uh, we are zoomed way out, but already what we're seeing is down as low as, as low as a thousand hertz, we're seeing a, a very large difference in frequency response. As you can see, 
uh, there were some kind of resonant peaks here that were smoothed out quite a bit with the, the cordial. Um, and then as we go up to the high frequencies, we see just a massive, massive change in how much uh, energy we're seeing in these high frequencies. Here's a, a great place to measure. We're seeing the difference between negative, let's say, negative 40.2 dB and negative 42. Uh, uh, so that's more than a 2 dB difference, and that's that's right around uh, 7 7 K. So um, what a huge difference. I mean, that's, that's kind of like you're using a, a high-frequency shelf EQ to roll the high end off, um, and so that is uh, pretty impressive. So uh, again, this is uh, that difference. The orange is the cordial, and the pink uh, is the... Um, uh, existing uh, cabling, the Megami and uh, and Monster. So we see quite a bit more level throughout the frequency spectrum through uh, uh, with this. So uh, a lot less signal loss there. All right. So uh, what I've set up here is um, I have a frequency generator that is uh, pushing out pink noise. Uh, and then that is coming out to a hardware insert. Uh, it's coming out of my patch bay um, into this uh, L2A passive reamp box. Out of the reamp box uh, into, in this case, uh, a, a monster cable. And then into uh, the a Chandler Red 47 preamp. Um, now, here's the thing. This whole chain is incredibly non-linear. Um, and that's okay because where the only difference between A and B is a single cable, that difference is going to be that cable. So uh, we're running it through that same frequency analyzer. And this frequency analyzer uh, is, uh, we're going to run again first the um, monster cable and lock that into the graph memory as pink. And then we'll run the cordial cable, and we'll uh, we'll let that run, and that will uh, that peak will show as uh, orange. You're going to see as uh, this is detecting an RMS, and uh, it's holding the peaks. So as peaks hop up here and there, uh, you're going to see this orange line push up a little bit. That's why I'm letting it run for um, for a, a little bit before uh, we switch cables to just let it get as as loud as it's going to get uh, in each um, each area. Now I'm going to go ahead and graph uh, this to memory. It's going to turn that line pink. Um, and I'm going to switch out the cables. And now we're going to start seeing differences in the, in the graph. Uh, pull this out of the way. Now, right now we're zoomed out a lot. Um, each one of these horizontal lines represents 20 dB of, of change. So uh, once this runs for a little bit, and again, it collects kind of all of those peaks, uh, we'll be able to see where we're at. Now, I'm going to start zooming in just kind of immediately so that these horizontal lines now represent about 5 dB change. Um, and as you can see, at the low frequency, we don't really have any change. Um, as we jump down here, we start to see right about 3K is when this really starts to open up. Maybe, you know, maybe the lines start to diverge a little bit at 2K. Uh, but what this is demonstrating is the amount of high frequency roll off or high frequency loss we're getting uh, in the other cable. As you can see, the cordial doesn't have any less um, uh, low frequency. Uh, it just has a lot more high frequency because it's not being lost in that cable. So um, we can see quite a drastic difference. Again, this is a single cable, the difference in a single cable. Let me turn this off now. So we're really seeing uh, what is essentially, when you're using a lesser cable, when you're using a cable like this pink line here, uh, every cable that you're running through uh, like that, you're getting uh, like a high frequency shelf roll off. Um, and really, it starts to happen around 3K. Um, if we look at some of the largest difference up here, we're looking at what is essentially... I'm looking right here at this peak. I'm just bringing it over here so I can read the numbers. 
uh, we're looking at 57, negative 57.2 dB versus negative 55.8, 55.7. I mean, that's a massive, massive difference uh, that we're seeing here uh, for a single cable. And again, not going from a cheap cable brand to an expensive cable brand. We're going from an expensive cable brand to, yet again, an expensive uh, high-end cable brand. So. Um, just absolutely stunning results. This is why everyone's freaking out about these cables. This is why I uh, I signed a deal with them to use their cables because I want to. Um, I genuinely want to. I don't want to use uh, what I was using. For my guitar rig, uh, especially when I'm looking at uh, uh, the difference that even just a few cables uh, are making, um, it's a no-brainer to me to, to go with these cables. So if you do want to purchase your own cordial cables, uh, you can do so online. Uh, if you use the code OWLCOVE, Owl Cove, um, you will get, I think it's 15 or 20% off of your, uh, your purchase, which is fantastic and it helps me out. So um, definitely look into doing that if it's something you're interested in. Um, if you have any questions uh, or comments, definitely feel free to put that into the comment section. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you found it uh, uh, entertaining. I hope you learned something from it. And um, yeah, thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.